Well, our first question tonight comes from Rodrigo Salinas. Thanks, Tony. My question for the panel is, is it fair or reasonable for the Minister for the Arts to seek to penalise arts organisations such as the Biennale of Sydney by threatening to remove public funding when these organisations decline to accept money from private donors that put them in a conflict of interest? Wendy Harmer. Oh, I get the big complex one first. Thanks, Tony. I think artists are here to challenge. They're up to stand. They're to here to stand up to their principles, and they are to shine a light in the dark places. I think they do us a great service. These artists by um, refusing to take money from an organisation which is effectively has has been. Um, characterised as running a, a Guantanamo Bay. I think this is actually perhaps quite unprecedented. And I think more than that, they do something else for the rest of us. They shine a light on the corporatisation of our world, which really begins the very first time your kids come home with a coupon from Hungry Jacks and say, hey, Mum, um, if I sell enough of these, I get some computer equipment or some sports equipment. I think we're all caught up with corporatisation and um, I, I thank these artists for stepping out <laughs> and standing up for what they so, believe. So to go to the question, um, are you saying you don't believe it's fair or reasonable for the Attorney General to threaten to penalise those artists? Oh, indeed I don't. And it is actually, as far as I understand, it's enshrined in the legislation, is it not, that the Attorney General should have um, arm's length uh, when it comes to... Well, he's our art, arts minister in this case. Yes, uh, yes, thank, yes, quite right. He's both. Uh, he's both. <laughs> Uh, that he should have arm's length, he should be at arm's length when it comes to funding the arts. This is not only protect, to protect the artists, <coughs> but he's also there to protect the minister who may be seen as um, engaging in fear or favour. So I think in this instance he's way, way off the mark. Let's hear from Susan Lee. Well, unsurprisingly, Tony, I, I don't agree with all of what Wendy says, although I do agree that the arts challenge us, they invigorate us, and particularly in regional Australia, they matter a great deal. What George Brandis has said is he's asked the Australia Council to develop some guidelines. I think it's important to note in this case that Transfield, the parent company of Transfield Services, owns a 12... It's just a 12% stake that we're talking about. I think a couple of the artists, and I believe there's not many, are having a little bit of a tantrum about this. I think it's really important that we recognise the role of corporate philanthropy. And look at the public <coughs> interest test. Governments cannot always step in and fund everything. And if generous donors are prepared to do exactly that, then we should allow them. And there aren't strings attached to those corporate donations. They're made out of generosity. They're not saying to the artists, you must produce, say, decide, and so on. And but I can really I, can think I that's important. Uh, Senator Brand has actually written mm. to the Australia Council asking it to come up with a policy to deny funding um, mm. to events or artists who refuse well, corporate uh, donations. Let's wait and see what. Let's wait and see <laughs> what the Australia Council comes up with by way of policy. But so let's are remember. Are you distancing yourself from that letter? Uh, not at all. Of, not at all. No. Um, a a letter has been written. A policy will be developed. The arts minister will consider it. Lots of people will have their say. And in the middle of this, we've got to recognise that people who donate to the arts in an era of scarce government funding, I think we all agree on that, uh, should be recognised, supported, and where those funds are made by corporates, they don't need to be contributed by government. Let's hear from Billy Bragg. Well, I think this, it's an example of the, uh, the corporatisation of culture. Uh, the, the world that we live in now, the, uh, it seems to me that the, uh, corporations now have... Well, as, as, uh, as, as they say in the United States of America, corporations are people too. But artists also have... Um, the, you know, the best kind of artists have a, have a credibility, have a cachet, and having their name associated with something negative uh, can damage that. It's, it's very difficult to build up credibility. It's very easy to lose. I have a, uh, uh, a in my contract, I am allowed to refuse to go on stage at a festival if a stage is sponsored by a tobacco company. Uh, my father died of lung cancer when he was 52. I was 18 at the time. I just couldn't, 
in, in any clear conscience do that. By the same token, I, you know, I drink beer. I go on, I'll go on a stage that's, that's sponsored by a beer company. So I think you know, it has to be left to the artist to decide who uh, they're willing to stand in front of. Because they're kind of asking quick, you to wear their T-shirt, if, yeah. you, if you know what I mean. You know. Just a quick follow-up on that, though. If artists do reject uh, private funding on moral grounds, should they also reject government funding if the government has a policy they don't agree with? Well, I mean, there, there is the problem. I mean, it's the, I think the same... Uh, uh, Artistic credibility applies. You have to be careful who you have your photograph taken with. But they're taxpayer funds, aren't they? I mean, you know, they, they it's almost, I suppose it's almost like money laundering, you know. They, they don't come direct from the corporation, you know, the, the, they come through government and they are they are supplied by all taxpayers <coughs> of all stripe. Yeah. So I, it's I, that, but it's that know. arm's length thing you were talking That's about, right. Wendy. Provided it's arm's length and you yeah. don't end up having to have your photograph taken with the, the Minister for, for Arts and those kind of things, I think then, you know, you're comfortable with that. It should be an individual's. I think it's a matter of individual choice rather than being imposed from above. Right,